everyone for joining us for this breakout session. This is Print Cut Profit with Garments and Graphics. Uh, we are really happy for everyone who joined us in this session. We've had a lot of different partners show up for uh, these different breakout sessions to give us insight about the print industry. But this session is going to be from our experts that we've uh, gotten in the heat transfer industry. We have uh, Ben Thorne with us from Shimica, a media partner that uh, specializes in heat transfer vinyl. Uh, we will also have Skip Grant later on join from uh, Skip Grant Productions. Uh, in this, we're going to uh, start the session by showing a quick uh, video from Skip Grant uh, going over some ways to elevate your business with heat transfer vinyl. Uh, we have employees from Mamaki and Chimica moderating the chat. So if you have any questions during the video, please post those and we will be back at the end of the video for a roundtable discussion where we try and answer all those questions for you. Thanks. Hi, hello everybody. I'm Skip Grant and I'm here in Atlanta, Georgia at the Mamaki headquarters and talking to you today about garments and graphics. It's a great seminar series that we have that we're educating people on all the business opportunities available with heat transfer, printing and cutting, particularly using Mamaki's equipment, their printers, their cutters, their printer cutters, using solvent-based ink or UV-based ink for certain applications along with Shemika heat transfer material that is available in such a wide range of products that it just allows us immense opportunities for printing and cutting and developing apparel graphics or garments as well as textiles as, as well. So I'm going to talk to you today about the different opportunities that exist based on the fact that whether you're a startup at home just doing a side gig where you're trying to do a little vinyl cutting on the side or you're a full-blown industrial garment decorator screen printing, embroidery, and all operations wanting to take advantage of digital printing and cutting because it's a very unique, very clever way to manufacture your product. So one of the most basic ways to create graphics for a t-shirt or a, a garment would be to use a standalone vinyl cutter. And a lot of times we're going to be just taking a simple roll of a particular color that we want. It may be blue or green or yellow or, or lime green, what have you. We're going to put it in the plotter. We're going to cut it weed away what we don't want, flip it over and transfer it quickly onto our different garments. This allows us a lot of different opportunities to decorate a t-shirt or cotton t-shirt. And I'm going to talk about a lot of different materials in addition, but we'll start here with the t-shirts where we're just basically taking here a light blue teal kind of beautiful color uh, and lay it right down. Lucky me, you know, it's a nice little simple graphic that's transferred right onto the t-shirt. Here's the yellow transfer. What we have to admire here is the brightness and color and the pigmentation of the heat transfer film. It's yellow on a black garment. Intricate design, cut really well, transferred beautifully, no glue, no stretch, no shrinking, no cracking, no anything, just a beautiful thin hand to it that Chemica material transfers super well. We can come in with a neon green, best dad ever. I kind of like this shirt and it was bright, bright and colorful and zinging and easy, nice simple little graphic. Remember that you can do multiple colors. You can register here in this example two colors, uh, yellow and a red together. For mom, you are the queen. Like that t-shirt too, for all you moms out there. And again, a beautiful graphic, soft, embedded, waterproof, durable, washable, easy to work with. Remember, one of the keys here is that this needs to be quick and easy. You're cutting it, you're weeding it, you're stripping it, you're transferring it, you want a quick cycle. You want that to go. Get a little fancier here and come on in with the bling, the metallics, the dance and the sparkly here a little bit. Add a little flair maybe with it, something like that. Sometimes people will combine multiple, a little sparkle here, a little color there, and create a different type of shirt that's really sweet. I like this one here. This is the metal. This is a, 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 a the metal metallic uh, blue, just the hockey jersey. Just a nice, simple design on the black. The gloss plays well with the matte finish of the shirt. The blue is really uh, iridescent, really nice. 
Here's a silver foil. It's Diva. Nice design, nice simple thing, a shiny metal foil right onto the matte black. Nice design. Again, keep in mind that the design behind this is, imp is important. You know, you're wearing a t-shirt. It's a message. It's a personality. It's a statement. You know, people have, have a lot to say about graphic tees and the way they're designed. We all don't want to wear a dorky design on our shirt, so, uh, you know, keep that design in motion. Here's the foil on the two, two colors, silver and gold. Nice design, nice cut lines, intricate design. Again, great adhesion, great washability, workability. And again, here's a nice design where they all brought it together. I did not design these. Cheers to the artists that have. And this is just a well done play of color, of texture, of sparkle, of shiny, of silver and gold, and a nice design that is definitely a wearable shirt. So these are all done with the Hotmark Revolution line of products from Chemica, which is a low temperature transfer film. Easy to weed, easy to work with, easy to transfer at 285, 285 degrees Fahrenheit for only five seconds. It's a quick transfer. And a lot of these films, as I keep talking about them, can go into so many different types of materials. And that's a, that's a key element. Now we're still talking about the solid material, so I'm going to continue on a little bit that, that we could go with cotton. Here's the Alikia logo done with a nice uh, shiny red on a matte cotton uh, hoop here. Really nice element of just using color and gloss and matte finish. It may be something bright and intricate like this, but maybe you would move into something more like the flock. This is a fuzzy white flock material put onto an upholstery cotton that is soft. I know the camera can't pick this up, but now we're thinking beyond t-shirts and hats. And I'm going to come back to this in a little bit. I'm going to go back to the, to the printing and the cutting and, the, and things like that. The basic thing is the solid colors that we talked about. Some of them come in a material that is already pre-printed. So if you don't have a printer and you only have a cutter, whether it's a little desktop cutter or one of the industrial ones, you can actually take advantage of pre-printed heat transfer materials. It's the fashion line from Chemica. And people will construct kind of multicolored uh, patterns done with that. There's some other specialty films like glow in the dark or uh, other things that carbon textures and other, uh, you know, totally sparkly, uh, elements and things like that that work really, really well for specialty applications. That's the cut part. When you get to the next stage, it's printing and cutting. So Garments and Graphics, this logo here, done on my shirt in full color, is done by printing on the white film, just like this. This is a Hotmark print revolution. It's a very thin material, 50 microns or 75. It's a polyurethane based. That means it is incredibly thin, takes on the texture of the material it goes onto. The, the color is embedded right into the polyurethane film. This is the material that actually goes into the shirt with the glue here. Um, just an incredible material that performs so well in washability, fade resistance, and most important to me, it's workable, it's weedable. You can do small, intricate designs and cut through them and cut it well. And the ink load from the Mamaki SS21 ink is beautiful, beautiful, bright colors. Just tremendous ability to go ahead and, and, and print and transfer without having it curl up the liner. A lot of us that have been doing this for years have known that some of the materials we've really struggled with late at night, you know, working and when, uh, you know, and now the idea that you can lay that ink down and it won't curl up the edges and it remains flat for the transfer tape that you can then transfer it on and again, press it quick and easy. So the print cut material is good for, you know, light colored garments. They actually have a, uh, uh, the white hot mark will go on to light, of course, because it's white or more in particular onto the dark colored garments. So, you know, it does really well for blocking the black and working as a blocker. You're printing the graphics with a little bit of a bleed and you have really end up nice image there. Um, and this is the whole print and cut thing that takes us into a full color printing where we're able to print and cut CMYK or light cyan light magenta, some of the machines have orange and light black. I mean, again, the Mamaki solvent line of printers are unbelievable for color and quality for laying it down onto this material and particularly to then cut it out afterwards 
in tight registration. LS, a printer cutter, the CJV from Amaki, which is what we love so much. This happens to be transferred onto leather, thinking of specialty materials, and the idea that low temperature can allows us to print onto all different types of materials, even like nylon, which would normally burn. So the idea is then to think differently. It's like, okay, so if we can cut all these cool colors and then we can print any color and we can, you know, work with this, then what else can we do? And then you combine it with the low temperature. Now I'm on upholstery leather, you know, or black leather, or I'm on the interior design cloth, or who would think to print and transfer onto cork? You know, you're like, cork. Hmm. That's an interesting surface to make a graphic on for a school or a restaurant or something. What about neoprene? I mean, since when are we doing graphics on wetsuits? Uh, uh, I'm a whitewater rafting guy, so I, that, that applies to my world of doing something washable, durable, freezable, heatable, stretchable, you know, properties of different materials. The idea here is we're trying to think outside the box. I'm trying to inspire you. Where's my inspire? trying to inspire everybody to think differently, to think past the shirts and the hats, think backpacks, think ski coats, think hockey bags, think sneaker plans. Like we, I was involved in a company that did graphics on, on uh, shoes. But people do horse bridles, they do motorcycle bags, they do leather products over here and all types of stuff that can handle the transfer if you have the right heat press to go ahead and transfer that. And, you know, here's uh, awning material for outdoor, kind of a silvery reflective type heat transfer cut really well for an outdoor awning. You're thinking, wait a minute, we were talking about t-shirts and hats a minute ago, and now we're talking about awnings for what, restaurants or retails or stores? Yes, absolutely. Or boat awnings or boat canvas or you name it. People would do all kinds of stuff on this equipment. You know, Shemica has got the headquarters here in Atlanta as well, and they take phone calls from all types of customers using this material for all types of industrial applications, commercial, retail, residential, you name it. So we get into this cutting, or we get into printing cutting, and we get into spot colors, we get into full color, and I want us to take this a step further. I want us to go to more of a creative idea of the artwork itself, that when you start to come up with really good artwork, think past lettering, and logos or graphic clip art images think differently so this set of samples is by an artist who i don't know but i appreciate the creativity here is that here's a bunch of different colors of the sparkly heat transfer applied to a light cotton but just a nice kind of artsy feel for something that's sparkly you know and well here somebody took really exquisite fabric and with shades of gray and different textures that the camera may not be able to pick up, does a really nice job with the lime green flock. So it's a combination of colors, textures, cool fabric, artsy artwork, and now you're on to something completely different and way more sellable and profitable and high-end than what we would normally deal with. Another thing to talk about and learn about is the, the benefits of heat transfer versus other ways of manufacturing. You know, we know that we can screen print, we can embroider. You know, screen printing is a lot of setup. You've got the, the building, the dark room, the film positives, the screens, the emulsions, and all of that. And that's for a higher run production scenario. And you're screening one color at a time. You get into embroidery, and now you're stitching something, and you're limited to the colors of the thread in a very complex situation of trying to embroider. Another way is dye sublimation, where we can print. And Mamaki is a world leader in dye sublimation printing around the world. But remember, that goes on to you know, uh, polyester and other type of uh, uh, substrates that are light in color and cannot go down onto a dark black image just like this. You know, We have other technologies as well, but each one has their spot. And heat transfer is very effective. Look here, we've got the orange and the red going down on black. Beautiful opaque, beautiful brilliant colors, tiny intricate design, adhesion really great, not coming up, not peeling, hardly any hand to it. Just simple. I know it's simple, but it's effective. And if you have to go onto dark garments or things that are stretchy or need the durability, then, you know, this is for you. Here's some metallics that we go on as far as uh, be, mixing a few and being a little bit creative. Now we're getting into the printing thing again, where we took some soft material here 
and started to do a little bit more of an artsy design, some print, some cut, and just being a little creative, a little more adventurous in splicing together different textures, patterns. And again, here's some of that pre-printed stuff embedded in uh, for, the, for the lettering. Here's again more of an artsy uh, graffiti type approach on a soft flock. This is a very thick, fuzzy felt type material, but it kind of works well with that artwork. This one I particularly like. This is a kind of a, a urban scene with shades of gray and black and a really great streak of silver. It's, it's a nice, very different approach. And that's what I'm trying to get us to think, is to think a little bit differently in how we, we go about designing our product and what we're using it for or who we're selling it to. You know, exotic fabrics, like I really like this uh, rust colored material. It just does really super well with the, uh, with the heat transfer. and it, I kind of like the suede. We've got some different things going on here that are just kind of different in thinking. Some people like to work with denim. You know, different, different products or jackets or jeans or what have you. They'll do flourishes. They'll do accents. They'll do logos on the back. You know, denim is a great material to work with. And again, heat transfer can go dark. Go onto the dark when screen printing would have a difficult time and things like embroidery would be difficult to stitch. You know, things like Carhartt jackets, the heavy, heavy cotton, also apply to this. Think differently, not only in the art and design, but the materials that you put it on, and more importantly, who you sell it to. And, and maybe if, if part of the seminar here is print, cut, and profit, we should be talking about profits and making money doing this. So the idea of print, cut, and profit is the idea that we are doing this for a reason. It kind of goes back to the why. You know, why are we doing this? Some people do it for business opportunity, and they're truly interested in profit and making this a business model. Some people, it's more of an artistic creation or a, a vehicle for let them uh, for their creativity. Other people want to help community and get involved with the sports and the teams and the church and whatever it may be. There's lots of different reasons why we get involved in doing apparel decorating or textile. But you think of your business cycle as the idea that whatever it is, you're getting the work and you're doing the work. And you need to pay attention to your business structure and your cycle. You have to sell, you have to market, you have to design, you have to specify, you have to quote, you have to do up the artwork and get it ready. You gotta do it, you gotta print it and cut it, transfer it, make the product. Then you have to you know, go ahead and deliver it. And the idea is that you get the work and you do the work and you want this to be fast, you want it to be easy, you want it to be simple, and you don't want it to be stressful. And the idea of using really good equipment from Mamaki the printers and the cutters, it's huge that the ink lays down beautifully and the print heads don't clog or that the cutter cuts it in perfect registration by reading the prop marks so well that you can do intricate designs that you're really thrilled about. This is huge. None of us want to stay up late at night making a whole bunch of shirts for our family reunion. No, we want this to be quick. We want the design. We want it to come from an idea and go right on through our design application Adobe Illustrator or whatever it may be, right to the rip, which that'll print it and cut it, or print it and cut it, or print it and cut it, all different ways. You guys, quick and easy. Mamaki equipment is excellent, and Chemica material to go along with it is a perfect combination. That is part of my enthusiasm about this combination and why I'm here doing the uh, garment and graphics seminar, because of great opportunity for the printing, the cutting, the materials, and what you can use it for. So it's important to think about that. You want to save time, you want to reduce stress, and you want to dramatically increase your products. And I really encourage you to talk to your Mamaki distributors worldwide, wherever you may be, and the dealer network about getting more information about how to utilize all this equipment and the materials involved and, and be tight with them. It's a fabulous situation. Now, keep in mind that the same equipment we're talking about, printing and cutting, can play out farther than just textiles. Do you know that Mamaki is a world leader in textile printing technology and there's some beautiful dye sublimation machines and other machines that will image and print onto different textiles. There's also the printer cutter that we're talking about here with the solvent ink, which is known to be very popular in lots of different ways to make money. Remember, just by taking the vinyl out and putting in a roll of pressure sensitive vinyl, you can start to do cut lettering cut logos, 
and labels, decals, signs, banners. Even some of the banners can be printed onto a coated fabric where you're getting not too far away from the apparel and the textile thing. Solvent ink, the same ink that's using for the heat transfers is the same ink that's doing unbelievable, high quality, incredibly colorful labels, decal signs, banners, floor graphics, windows, walls, it goes on and on. It goes in with fine art. I mean, who would have thought the same machine that's doing the heat transfers will do a, a wall graphic, contour cut. It goes on and on, and that's not the intent of my seminar here today. This is apparels and textiles, but do know that Mamaki and the equipment can go in all directions for many different markets around the world, and that's really why we're enthused. So again, keep in mind, there's a lot of possibilities here. Thank you for watching. I'm Skip Grant, and coming to you from Atlanta, Georgia, at the Mamaki headquarters. It's a pleasure to be involved in Innovation Days. And cheers to the whole Mamaki crew and the marketing team particularly for putting this together. And cheers to Shemika here in Atlanta as well. Rosa, Ben, Severin, and the crew there, Elizabeth, really great teamwork with all of this together. So I appreciate it again. I'm Skip Grant, happy to come live to you from Atlanta. Right. Thanks, Skip, for that great presentation. As always, I've seen variations of that at different trade shows as we're getting back into the swing of things, going back to trade shows. Uh, we yes. have a few questions that have been popped up in chat since the video started. We can go through those. Ben, I know that you did answer one of those already, but if anybody hasn't seen it, uh, someone did ask if any of the uh, materials from Shimica were uh, laser friendly. Yes. And the ones that we've done some pretty extensive testing on here in partnership with a couple local companies uh, was the original Hotmark product line. And though I don't know a ton about it, my understanding is that things that are PU, polyurethane based, not PVC, but PU, are, are laser friendly. It's just a, a matter of fine tuning some of the settings, but the only one that we've done here is the hot mark. And that's cutting and yeah. using it to cut and weed and burn away um, all the extra material as well as just do a single cut or right. well speaking of cutting i had a question uh for skip and and uh, rosa thank you i didn't introduce you at the beginning but thank you for joining us as well uh for anyone who is trying to get into this form of printing does the do these kinds of applications work best in uh large format printing or smaller format printing? I know uh, for people who have watched a lot of the other sessions, we do have a new line of uh, CG cutters out, the uh, CJAR series, uh, specifically one in the 24 inch. Does the materials that you guys uh, provide and the applications that you guys were talking about lend itself to larger format printing, uh, cutting as well? Oh yeah, Ben. <laughs> no, we ben didn't skip anybody. Either, no, no, either ben, one. With well, and you know, we experimented a bunch with the cutters there as well as here. But you've seen you've you've seen the business go very heavy cuttable mm -hmm. to a lot more balanced because people are finding that hey. Um, I can print all these multicolor graphics, um, you know, to some degree, hey, if I want this particular red, I'm not shopping all around for it. I'm going to print my exact Pantone uh, onto a printable media. 
we we tend to sell a lot of the standard colors in a balance with, with the printable, but also as I mean Shemaka as a company, we have a lot of specialty finishes and textures and thicknesses and and that would strictly apply to the GX or to the cutting versus a print and cut. Mm -hmm. That's good to think about. Skip, did you have uh, something you wanted to add Yes. To yes. When you compare the small cutters to the large format, say a 54-inch CJV, uh, what's amazing to me about that is that the, the, the quality and the, the uh, precision of the cut is, you know, is right on. I mean, you can be working with a small format plotter, and you could just be simply cutting an intricate design on a Mamahi CG plotter or you can move it right up to a 54 inch machine and do 200 of the same decals in a giant matrix across your web and find the same super tight print to cut registration same tolerances of cutting and to me that's amazing and then there's another option of a standalone plotter even a 54 inch sr series or something like that where you're printing on one device and cutting it on another reading the crop marks and a lot of people don't appreciate the engineering and the technology that has come together to allow us to to do this automation this workflow of printing and cutting so precisely with the depth and the intric intricacy um you know you, it, it's just amazing that uh, mamaki's got so many options of, of equipment that all work together so well whether it's a, a new beginner just starting out with a little desktop cutter or somebody that's got you know a dozen of these things in a room just banging out graphics all day long yeah, like the like I brought up, anyone looking into uh, starting out with a smaller cutter, we do have the twenty four uh, the twenty four inch uh, new CG AR series coming out. So look forward to that if you're looking for more entry level uh, standalone plotters. Uh, I got another question about a uh, die blocker HTV. Do uh, you guys offer uh, specifically Shemika? Do you guys offer die blocker HTV? Rosa? Having a little bit trouble hearing you, Rosa. Sure. Oh, she might be joining you? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm around the corner. Oh, perfect. There you are. So we, we do. We do have uh, a line of printable um, material and cuttable materials uh, that, that do offer that, that uh, barrier. Um, with the Hotmark Print Revolution, which is our most popular printable material, the 1798, uh, we also sell it to we sell it to distributors, but also to industrial um, targets. Uh, so that's the printable side of it. But with the um, cuttable side, uh, we have the uh, Hotmark uh, Revolution. And what's good about um, these two products is obviously the the glue that is that allows um that allows the uh, the um the material from uh, basically stops the material from 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 bleeding um the hot mark print is is very thin very stretchable very matte and it, and, and of course it goes perfectly well with um you know a cjv uh um printer from Mimaki. Uh, we have one here that that we right. actually use um that you've uh, uh helped us with um lewis and and the whole team anytime and, uh, anytime um and 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 same for the cuttable uh, material which also has a barrier um uh, you know the it's it's it, it can be used with the uh with the minaki uh cutters well. I, I know that yeah, i was going to bring up that you guys do have the cjv in your offices there uh Shemika's office is actually just down the street from us in the uh swanee office uh we do love any chance that we can get to uh, experiment on your newer materials and come down there and work with you guys. So thanks yeah. for always opening your doors for that. Uh, same to you, Skip. You've also helped out a lot with like worked with us coming to the different trade shows. And you actually uh, did this same presentation at uh, Long Beach, uh, MBM Long Beach for us. Recently, yes. Right? Yes. Yeah, we were showing off uh some of the some of these same applications there it's kind of hard to explain thoroughly in video series like the feel of some of those applications like the uh like the felt uh felt feel of some of these materials 
if it's not in person, right? The camera sometimes doesn't uh, show it off correctly. Is there anything that uh, you want to speak on more about those specific applications that don't like translate too well from the video? Certainly, certainly. You know, that was a great show, the Long Beach uh, Impressions yeah. show. Um, you know, speaking to, speaking to hundreds of people about what they do, what they create, what they uh, print or cut or what have you. And one of the, one of the most amazing things I think of from the feedback from the show, and, and it applies to all of us in the industry, wherever we are in this, that some of the things that are really important or you don't originally see. And, you know, I think it's really important to note that one of the biggest features here is to be able to transfer at a lower temperature. Now, you know, that's pretty boring by itself, but it's actually very important because all of a sudden, all these strange materials that would normally melt or buckle or fall apart at high temperatures are actually now capable of decorating. And that opens up in an enormous amount of possibilities of working with different fabrics or textiles or materials that you normally wouldn't be able to do which then opens up endless markets and applications and ways to decorate things like a burlap bag or a, you know, a, like a, you know, a, a, you saw it in the video there, just all different types of cottons or polyesters or, or strange leathers or, or what have you. Um, that was probably the most amazing thing at the show that people really uh, were surprised about. You know, people know about heat transfer and they know about cutters, at least a lot of people do, but they didn't really realize Two things, you know, one that the lower temperature transfer opened up the idea that you could go to so many materials if they even were thinking about that, particularly like nylon or an umbrella or some other things that are very fragile and sensitive. Um, you know, and the other thing too is just kind of thinking about different business opportunities. We all know that right across the Mamaki line, whether it's solvent or UV or dye sublimation or cutting alone here in this example, is it the fine art market, the, the interior design, the decor, the decorating, the personalization, the customization of all types of products, whatever it may be, is just exploding. And you know, when you start to integrate a few of the different Mamaki machines, a printer here, a cutter there, a UV flatbed over here, my gosh, I mean, even a UV printer can do heat transfer on certain items there, uh, particularly with the white ink is, is really powerful. But these same machines, the UV printer can print on so many different surfaces. It's just, you know, it's just, you know, I've been at this a long time and it is just amazing and fascinating to continually learn how this technology goes out into the world. And, and I, I love that topic and I chase it avidly. And, uh, you know, uh, you know, so that was, that was a good show. Lewis, we had one with Mamaki uh, last week in M Manhattan uh, with Shemika right. and Mamaki there at the Preface show, the fashion design, you know, about textures and patterns and trends in the fashion industry. And then we looped over to the Fashion Institute of Technology and we did some filming and some interviews uh, and just incredible, uh, boy, design and imagination by some of the artists of how they would take Mamaki equipment along with the instructors there and things like that just fascinating i i encourage all of us to to widen our mind and 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 keep learning about all this it's just incredible and it certainly keeps my job fun so there <laughs> i wish i could have been at that show i've seen some of the pictures of it you yeah there was some real interesting stuff going on there uh a little jealous that i wasn't able to go but Hope you guys brought some good samples back for us to play with. Uh, you did bring up UV inks, and we also got a question about UV inks in the chat. Uh, are there any caveats when doing these kinds of uh, printing on UV inks? I know, uh, like we said before, Shimiga has a CJV in, our, in their office. You've come and used our solvent printers over at our offices before. Uh, that it's like the more recommended thing that uh, uh, style of printing that we uh, encourage with a heat transfer. But what are some of the applications that you can get with UV printing? I know the official stance is we uh, want to encourage people not to uh, not to print on anything that is uh, wearable. We encourage uh, UV inks to make uh, to be used with applications that are. Uh, uh, bags, uh, tote bags, things that aren't being put on skin-to-skin -skin contact. Yeah. 
Uh, I'm going to agree with you, uh, Louis. I mean, we've, we've done a lot of testing. Um, we actually came to your guys' uh, um, um, tech center, um, and it works beautifully with um, so our materials, printable materials. Uh, they work beautifully with uh, your UV printers. Um, and I, and I, I'm going to say, um, to kind of piggyback on what you were saying, we, we, uh, we kind of follow the same guidelines, which is to, uh, right now, to stick to... Uh, uh, and until we develop and do more testing, um, we would rather stick to um, bags. So anything that is not uh, close to the skin. Um, but but yes, I mean, uh, we, we've tried that. It works beautifully. The the, the rendering is really, really nice. Um, so it's, again, following your, your sticking to the same guidelines that you guys have. Of course, we know that add, the yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Of course, we know that the colors, the finished product looks beautiful. But yeah, it's more testing does need to be done. Skip, was there something that you wanted to add as well? I, I did, and um, what you both uh, reference to is, of course, the certification and uh, necessary awareness of uh, ink and you know uh, skin contact and and people's sensitivity to that thing. Of course, mm -hmm. with with UV ink on a garment, but remember. People are printing on all, uh, using the Chemica Hotmark Print Revolution material to print onto. That can transfer onto all those other materials. <laughs> you know, the world is full of a lot of things that will receive that other than just something that you would wear. And sure, backpacks, hockey bags, ski coats, or, or what have you, there's a lot of applications. One of the cool things is, though, I mentioned earlier, that UV, the UCJV, it's a printer cutter from Mamaki that's got the UV ink. Wow. we just love that thing because it's got white ink in particular that dries mm -hmm. instantly that you can lay that down under the CMYK or on top of it or what have you. White ink is important and, and, and can be super creative, but the clear, the clear matte or gloss and being able to build up and do an embossed look on a, on a transfer is insane. I mean, now we're doing an embossed textured pattern thing that's going on to something that could be a package, a fabric uh, wrap, a scarf. It, it could be all kinds of crazy stuff. That UV printer is capable of textured printing by layering multiple things down. We are just scratching the surface. And really, it's got to start from the designers out there, the creative people that are able to imagine something outrageously done in in a dimensional form and um i just can't i can't wait to see what's going to happen in the next year or two but I, I will loop back and say the shemica product receives uv ink very well the adhesion is there color is there the, mm -hmm. the, the quality is unbelievable and of course the print cut registration of the mamaki systems are great i think everybody should keep an eye on that technology as well in in addition to of course the core here which is the eco solvent ss21 ink that is the the core printable ink that is a solvent base it bites right into that pu material and uh, embeds itself for the durability and the the bright colors that we love and see and the long-term durability that we get but like i say you know once you dig down into these real technical things this combination of mamaki and shemica and how it works is just superior out there in the industry and i i we all are trying to figure out quick ways to explain this to people so they can uh, so they can understand it and then can take advantage of it and then make a lot of money doing it or saving time reducing stress and uh you know being more efficient in what they do how's that how's that for a all-in-one answer i like you should be on the payroll man <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, i know that uh uh, a lot of the stuff that we have been bringing up here, I do want to emphasize that all of the videos, if you heard something, an application that seems like cool or something that you could use in your business, a lot of this already done and uh, available online, a lot of application videos of uh, practical applications of uh, heat transfer examples of uh, the clear ink that uh, Skip brought up before of uh using uh, solvent inks versus uh, UV inks. All the information is on our YouTube, videos on our YouTube, uh, information on our website. Please uh, visit our social media to figure out uh, more about what you can do with our printers. Uh, now, Skip, do you guys uh, offer testing for, uh, do you work with like different companies 
or uh, testing some experimental materials? I, I know we've worked a lot of the partnership that you have with uh, Shemika is along with us. We constantly are sharing new materials in time. You guys get new, Shemika gets new materials and you guys are usually coming over to help with testing that out, figure out what kind of temperature, what kind of uh, profiles need to be used. Uh, do you uh, offer that as well, Skip? Yes, you know, it's the teamwork that you're just saying with with uh, me and Shemika and Mamaki here. I mean, this is all what we have to do. I mean, many of my friends that are really solid, great Mamaki dealers do the same. Yeah, I think it's a, 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 a critical component of being a Mamaki dealer that can take uh, applications that the end users have. I mean, some people want to print on hockey pucks one minute or sneakers the next or uh, beer tabs the next, or it may be, uh, you know, uh, towels for a professional football game. There, there's endless applications. And one of the things about implementing new technology is to test it first. You, you, can't, you can't have a company that manufactures something and go online and buy something like this and think it's going to work. This is a huge integration. Uh, Mamaki's got dozens of different types of ink. You know, nobody likes to, or nobody spends the time talking about different formulations of ink. You know, the, you know, the 100, the 140, the 150, the 170, the 200, you know, the variations of, of UV ink or solvent ink or dye sublimation textile ink. The ink is magic in how it works in relationship to the materials that you go on. And I'll loop back to, yes, of course we do testing with solvent and UV and textiles as any really good Mamaki dealer should. And we should all be working together with different manufacturers of materials in, co in combination with Mamaki equipment. Uh, this is an imperative and important task and it takes time and it takes effort. We need money to do it. And then when we find these solutions and we say, hey, this works, then we can turn around and send it out to the to the sales force to go educate the general population about what can be done now with, with these combinations of events. Great. Now we are getting closer to the end. So before we the session gets to that end point, I want to open it up to both uh, you, Rosa, and Skip, any new materials, any new uh, projects that you guys are working, that your companies are working on? Um, what I would I like to say the, uh, is, um, uh, I believe yesterday there was a session with um, uh, Beaver Paper, and it was mainly about sustainability, which, I mean, it was a great session. Kudos to, to Gabriel and to uh, uh, the, the team at Beaver Paper. And, and I would say what we're trying to do Kind of to piggyback on what um, Skip was saying, you, you have to understand, listen to where the market is going, what, what the customers want, which is to have more sustainable uh, product. So in, in that vein, we've been developing um, more colors of the of the quick the quick flex revolution, sorry, which is a um, water-based uh, PU, uh, which is Ocotex, which means that it's Ocotex certified, meaning it's it's safe to be applied on. Uh, baby's clothes and, and children's clothes. Um, but again, we, we we were last week at the uh, preface uh, show in New York, which was all about trying to be sustainable. And um, and again, listening to what the customers want, to where the market is going, um, it, it, it's really in our best interest to all work together, understand where these textile manufacturers are, are uh, what, are that, what they are working on, where they're going to, to be able to develop more uh, sustainable products and also sustainable solutions. Yes, I'll I'll add to that, Rosa, because we were both in Manhattan, and yeah. that was a that was a major topic was the sustainability and, and the environmental concerns about some of our industries. Um, you know, we see a lot of this coming from Europe that may be ten years ahead of us here in the United States, uh, but nonetheless, it's something that is global that we should be paying attention to. Um, my my add on this about uh, the industry as we wrap up here is that. I've been doing this almost 40 years. And what was funny, uh, me at 22 years old, I was cutting uh, plastisol heat transfer material on a Gerber machine and flock as well, um, figuring out how to transfer it and make cool shirts way back then. So this technology, this part is not necessarily new, but still wildly exploding now mm -hmm. as a general uh, population when people have you know these little uh, desktop cutters that the that there's uh, the hobby market and such. So I have chosen. I, uh, I'm on a 12 month 
gig here to try and piece together four major quadrants of the Mamaki world. Mamaki covers is a world leader in this technology. One of them is the sign and graphics. Of course, we know that signs, graphics, labels, decals, vehicle wraps, and so forth. Another one would be um, textiles and apparel, which is what this episode is focusing on, the idea of apparel and textiles and working with fabrics and fashion design. And, and I am trying to work through these, these areas of expertise deeply to take all the knowledge we can and pack it up in ways that we can teach them to people. So sign and graphics is, would be one. Textile and apparel would be another area of explosion. A huge area of opportunity is and to understand is the industrial printing and cutting. This can mm -hmm. be with UV or it can be with solvent. It gets into manufacturing and all types of graphic production that is just uh, fabulously interesting and just exploding across the country with a do-it-yourself uh, attitude, a bring the equipment in attitude. It could be schools, you know, universities, all types of manufacturing. Uh, building designers, architects, engineers, all types of uh, uh, industrial applications that are not your normal printing graphic visual to the general public. The fourth area that I'm focusing on, and I'm doing this over 12 months, kind of working on four quadrants at once, is the fine art world. I, the fine art, the interior design, the decor is just, again, exploding. People are manufacturing lamps and all types of furniture and tabletops and all types of interior products or exterior as well. And I, I find that, uh, you know, in the later days of my career, even as I move into semi-retirement or whatever that looks like, I am favoring uh, some of these really fun areas of the industry. And I really enjoy uh, interviewing some of these artists that just, uh, you know, uh, come up with the most incredible things, whether it's cutting or printing and cutting or what have you. Uh, it's just It's just been a wonderful, industry and a great career and i still find it wildly fascinating every single day and i you know i encourage all of you i know a lot of you younger people at mamaki i encourage all of you to learn and see what's going on it's and not to get stagnant in your careers it is just fascinating how fast it's moving get on one of these trains and go in the direction that you want to go wow well thanks for that Ed. thanks both of you for joining us. Thanks for uh, taking the time out to be a part of this session. And thank everybody who joined us for this session. Uh, we have a lot more of Innovation Days to come. Uh, if any question wasn't answered in this video, please feel free to contact us directly. Can contact Shimika and Grant Graphics directly. And uh, please stay uh, stay for any of the other sessions coming up this week. Excellent. Thank you, Lewis, yeah. very much. All right. You and the whole Mamaki Thank crew and, and all, all involved. All Thank right. you, Lewis. Thank you, Vernon. You guys are great to work with. Yeah. Bye. You too, yes. always. Bye. Bye. All right. Bye-bye.